Thank you for having me here today. Um, I'm here representing Pat Pope, uh, who is our CEO. He unfortunately had a conflict today. He's at a large public power council meeting. Uh, he's currently serving as the chair for the large public power council, so he asked me to come and, and be an able substitute. So I just want to talk a little bit today about NPPD, uh, where we're at. I want to spend a little time talking about the Southwest Power Pool market. I heard that come up in a couple of uh, conversations in some of the earlier presentations today, and then talk some about what MPPD is focusing on in terms of our, our carbon footprint. Okay, so you know, we have a diverse mix of resources. We have nuclear, fossil, hydro, uh, wind, solar. Uh, we have a little over 3,000 megawatts of generation, uh, sold just under 19, or just under 20 billion kilowatt hours of electricity last year, about $1.1 billion of revenue. So pretty significant. Uh, size organization, we serve most of rural Nebraska outside of the Lincoln and Omaha area. Uh, we have a, a strong belief in a diverse portfolio mix, a diverse set of resources, and a set of resources that we want to move and continue to move towards a, a smaller carbon footprint. So I want to talk a little bit about our transmission system. We are the largest transmission owner and operator in the state of Nebraska, uh, a little over 5,000 miles of transmission at the 34,000 volt and above standpoint. We've invested a lot in our system over the past decade uh, to improve the reliability of the system, expand the system to provide new service. Uh, almost 600 miles of new transmission construction and about uh, almost $750 million of investment. Most of that's been driven through the Southwest Power Pool process. A lot of the costs for those uh, facilities are ultimately uh, shared across the Southwest Power Pool footprint. Switch gears a little bit. I want to talk a little bit about the Southwest Power Pool market. The graph you see there is um, a graph of the generator stack. So this takes all the generation in the market, and the vertical axis is the marginal cost. It's the cost to make the electricity. It's, it's essentially the fuel cost. Um, the stuff clear on the left-hand side, the kind of orangish color, that's renewables. So that's, you know, fuel cost is effectively zero. And then it just stacks up the cost of all the resources until you get all the resources in the market environment. So this is basically how the market works. Every day it's settling um, which generators run and which generators don't run to serve the load in the marketplace based on their marginal cost to produce electricity. So this is a summer day in 2017 where the wind was blowing pretty well. I want to point out a couple things. The, the line clear on the left-hand side is the minimum load for the footprint. So the minimum load for the footprint is a little under 21,000 megawatts. The line clear on the right-hand side is the maximum load for the footprint. The maximum load for the footprint is a little bit under 51,000 megawatts. And if you look at that generator stack, that's over 80,000 megawatts of generation capability that's available in the market footprint. Okay. Summer 2017. So this is what's currently in the Southwest Power Pool queue, or close to current, recently in the Southwest Power Pool queue. Almost 65,000 megawatts of new wind, about 20,000 megawatts of solar, about 3,000 megawatts of battery, and about uh, 600, 700 megawatts of gas facilities. So this is the stuff that's being studied in various phases of, of Southwest Power Pool's process to study generator interconnections. Southwest Power Pool, if they forecast in the future, obviously not all of that's going to happen, right? Southwest Power Pool, us folks in the Southwest Power Pool, we have a, a simple problem of supply and demand. We have a demand of about 50,000 megawatts, 51,000 megawatts, and a supply that's well in excess of that. And the desire to build a whole lot more supply, basic economics says that that's going to be a challenge. Right? It's going to be a challenge, and I'm going to talk a little bit about how that impacts us today, but it's certainly going to impact our future as well. Even with what the Southwest Power Pool is kind of estimating you know, down the road of maybe 40,000 of that 80,000 megawatts or so coming into service in some fashion at the maximum, it's a significant amount of energy. Of course, there's going to be some retirement of existing facilities. Economics are still going to happen, right? and there's still going to be a balance. But this oversupply of energy, this oversupply of capacity in the marketplace creates an environment where there's a lot more volatility in prices, a lot lower prices. We've seen an increase in hours where the prices are negative. We've seen an increase in hours where the actual cost of energy is less valuable than the cost of the production tax credit. It's just a factor of where we are today. It's what we all have to deal with, what you all have to deal in this, in this room as new projects and new resources come along. 
So if you look at the Nebraska portion of the queue, I've uh, put in there a chart that basically shows by transmission system where this stuff is going. Okay, it's not, it's not by who's going to take the output of those facilities, but it's by it's where it's being in connect, interconnected. The vast majority of these interconnections continue to happen on an NPPD system. It kind of makes sense. We're the big transmission person, provider in the state. Um, it creates a lot of work for our team and our staff, and that's, that's okay. That's part of what we have to do. We work through the Southwest Power Pool process. We work with the developers. We work with the off-takers. We bring those facilities along. The piece that's in uh, where there's a signed generator interconnection, that's the stuff that's currently being worked. There's about a uh, little over 1,000 megawatts there. Uh, in various projects, some of them I've heard brought up in various conversations today with various different off-takers in the room. The big chunk there, that light orange, that's in the, the DICES phase in the Southwest Power Pool. How much of that becomes real? How much of that happens? Big question mark for us. Um, follow the process, stay true to the process, work with the sour, Southwest Power Pool in doing the analytics. We get heavily engaged when a developer says, I'm ready to proceed with a generator interconnection agreement. From a resource standpoint, uh, in 2017, our generation for our customers was 65% carbon free. Okay, that's primarily uh, from our nuclear facility. We also have wind, we also have solar, we also have a good chunk of hydro. A lot of that comes from Western Area Power Administration's preference power purchases. That equates to 682 pounds of CO2 per megawatt hour generated. That's that intensity number similar to what Kevin referenced. So if you put that in a kilowatt hour basis, it's 0.682 pounds per kilowatt hour. Um, that's a 32% reduction from our numbers in 2010. If you go back and look at our carbon intensity in 2005 compared to last year, it's a 55% reduction in 2005. So we're taking a different approach from some other utilities potentially, but we're still focused on the goal of reducing carbon emissions over time. Community solar, there's a good example of some things that we're doing um, with our portfolio mix to put more solar in. Uh, we have, uh, I think it's still the largest uh, community solar facility, largest solar facility in the state in Kearney, uh, close to six megawatts, a small facility in Scotts Bluff, a small facility in Venango, Scotts Bluff's looking at expanding. Several of our wholesale customers um, have put in solar or wind facilities of their own as part of this uh, process. And uh, we're looking at uh, more interest, I said, in Scotts Bluff. The city of Norfolk and Shadron are also seriously considering community solar projects. So it's an opportunity working with our communities, working with our customers, whether they're wholesale or retail, to bring more of these resources to bear uh, in Nebraska to continue to, to green up to reduce the carbon footprint in our portfolio. We have a couple grant proposals that we wanted, I wanted to highlight briefly. Um, we're doing an application with the Nebraska Environmental Trust for battery energy storage system that would be in, in uh, combination with uh, potential community development storage. We're also working with the Community Energy Alliance uh, to get some electric vehicle charging station grant funds to put more charging stations in our communities across the state, provide more opportunities for people as they start to migrate and purchase electric vehicles, have a place to charge besides at home. Quickly on the Monolith project, we announced that project a couple years ago. Monolith Materials, they're coming to Lancaster County, Nebraska. They're building their facility by Hallam, Nebraska, next to our Sheldon Station. They make carbon black. Uh, carbon black is a material. It's basically powdered carbon. It's what gives the strength to the tires on your cars. It's what gives the, the color and the strength to the, the cases on your cell phones. Uh, if it's black and it's plastic, it's probably got carbon black in it. They make it using natural gas. In that process, it's a very clean process compared to how carbon black has been traditionally made. Uh, the byproduct that comes off of that is hydrogen gas. That hydrogen gas, we are going to purchase from them and use it to generate electricity. So when they are fully done with their project, we will be generating 125 megawatts worth of electricity roughly out of Sheldon Station Unit 2. That gives us the ability to offset another roughly million tons of carbon dioxide uh, emissions from our power plants a year when that's all up and running. Uh, Monolith just recently had an open house for their uh, test technical center here in Lincoln. Um, so they're gonna, they have already become a, 
a good resident and a good corporate citizen of the Lincoln Lancaster County area. I'm looking forward to working with them more. One other thing briefly that I wanted to mention is we are also involved, this uh, came up in one of the early conversations, we are also involved with several uh, Department of Energy grants looking at issues around carbon storage and sequestration. Uh, carbon safe is what a couple of these grants are called. And so we're partnering with others to look at ways and to understand uh, if carbon can be safely and economically stored uh, to help answer the question. Generation, to provide electricity, it's got to be a little of everything. So how do you do that in a way that uh, um, is more sustainable and reduces the carbon footprint over time? And carbon sequestration and storage might be part of that answer. Looking forward to the questions. Um, thank you for allowing me to be here today. And I'm going to introduce Mr. Tim Burke.